Coach Corey Ween, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be attraction, seeking approval, and dishonest friendships. Well, I've got five emails I'm going to go through with you today, and it's always interesting to me how the emails come in. And all five of these are emails that guys have paid me to answer. And it's just neat because I talk about how like attracts like, even like when I get emails from people. It's like all of the emails that come in around the same time tend to have the same kind of theme to them. And so it's amazing how those things just kind of magically line up and I just kind of focus on one particular topic or one particular area that a guy or a girl or a group of people are actually having a hard time with. So before we get into it, I got a quote that I wrote on this topic that I'd like to share. And it says, true alpha males are clear in their intent and sexual desire from the moment they realize they have a sexual interest in a woman. Only beta males mask their sexual desire, intentions, and enter into phony friendships under false pretenses and hopes that they can later convert the friendship into a relationship. Men who perceive themselves as a catch will never stick around agreeing to be friends first when a woman puts them in friend zone. Men who mask their sexual desire and enter into fake friendships with women who they desire sexually is simply approval seeking and weak behavior. It is an attempt by beta males to mask a lack of confidence, abundance of fear, desire to avoid rejection, and feelings of weakness and insecurity. A true alpha male goes for what he wants without apologizing and in spite of his fear of undesirable consequences. Alpha males accept any outcome without attachments because they know that at least showing up and taking action is what they owe themselves, women, and the world as a demonstration of their strength and masculinity. So let's go ahead and jump right into the first guy's email. He says, hey coach, I've known this girl who's a very good friend of my ex-girlfriend. We didn't really talk much when I was with my ex-girlfriend. We just used to see each other a few times when she came to see my ex and when we went out on double dates. I never made an effort to get to know her much back then. So two years, fast forward, I am no longer with my ex and one day I saw her in my building parking lot. I went and said hello and found out that she was working in a company around the area. During the conversation, I found out that she got married with the same guy she was with but her job wasn't going very well. She works in the software industry and offered that if she wants, I can help her get a job at my company. So I did help her getting a job at the company I work at. Afterwards, she started working at my company. We started talking a lot about almost everything, started hanging out, and we got along great. All these times, she was still married, but she suddenly got divorced like three and a half months ago. Well, that's convenient. And then we, he says, we still talk a lot and started hanging out outside of work, like going to the movies, going out, having fun, etc. On different occasions, she would give me the impression that she has some interest in me. I am not assuming, but inferring from different conversations. Anyways, I was not being pushy and a little bit cautious because we first, we worked together, and second, I was giving her time to recover from the divorce. At the end of the day, the best thing is like, especially in a situation like that, is to get right back up on the horse. And the bottom line is you're hanging out with her all the time and you have these feelings of desire and you're thinking, which is what typical nice guys will do, oh, I'll give her time to get over this guy. And then you wait and you wait and you wait and you continue hanging out and then all of a sudden you find out she's dating some other dude. That's why you don't wait. If you're hanging out and the moment presents itself, She's playing with her hair. She's touching your arm. She's punching you playfully in your arm. You guys are laughing. She's standing too close. That's when you can just say, I think you need to get over with and kiss me right now. Or you just go for the kiss right then and there in that moment. He says, but at the same time, I didn't want to give her an impression that I was not interested or anything. So we continued to hang out a lot and we were holding hands a few times when we went out. You're holding hands but no kiss? Come on, bro. He says, we always have fun when we go out and we have a great time. Last week we were hanging out and I tried to kiss her when I was about to leave, but she said, let's not do that. That's not good. But then she texted me back that I caught her off guard and gave me reasons like she's still friends with my ex-girlfriend and we work together. 
But at the same time, she also said she needs to heal and complete a recovery process, etc. When she says something like that, then you say, great. When you get to the point where you're ready to explore things, then give me a call and we can continue to hang out then. But obviously, I'm attracted to you at this point. We have a lot of chemistry and I just really can't proceed as just being a friend because obviously in this particular case, she was married, so she was really unavailable. But these t this happens sometimes. Sometimes you become friends with somebody and, and this kind of thing happens. But for you to continue going forward in hopes that she's later going to change her mind, you're basically prostituting your feelings because now you went from just having a platonic friendship to being sexually attracted to this woman. And you probably see, al always found her attractive but never acted upon it because she was really unavailable. But you'd be lying to yourself and continuing to go forward and hanging out as friends and hoping that things will change. That's the worst thing that you can do is because your desire is there. But if she says, oh, I'm not ready, I can't, I'm trying to get over my ex-husband, blah, blah, blah. And that's when you just say, hey, well, I'd love to continue hanging out and explore where this can go, but I don't want to just hang out strictly in a platonic sense anymore. I, I just, I don't think that would, that wouldn't work for me. And I wouldn't want to do that. It wouldn't be fair to me and it wouldn't be fair to you. Women say that all the time to guys, so you shouldn't have a problem saying that to a woman. Because that's the truth. That's what you feel. You're obviously, you went from a platonic feeling to now you have romantic feelings for this girl. You don't want to hide it or mask that or be phony about it or because it's approval-seeking behavior. That's why the beta male sticks around thinking, oh, I'll change your mind. He says, so I didn't want to push the issue and just told her that let's just be friends for now. Come on, man. You didn't say that. That's the worst thing that you can do because it's not what you really want. You're like, Okay, I'll be friends now and hopefully you'll change your mind later. That's typical nice guy, approval-seeking behavior. Can you imagine James Bond doing this? Yeah, it's not going to happen, bro. He says, nothing changed between us at work and nothing is awkward and we are still getting along great, but I have noticed that since then she reaches out to me more, sends way more text messages trying to get more attention. We haven't gone out outside of work then though. My question is, how should I handle this situation? I've read your book and I follow your videos and I'm not chasing her and I probably need to give her some time anyways. I wouldn't do anything when she reaches out at this point because you've known each other and you've hung out umpteen times. This is what you should say to her when she reaches out. Hey, it's great to hear from you. I would love to see you. When are you free to get together? And let her tell you and then say, great. How about 8 o'clock, my place? Why don't you grab a bottle of wine and come on over and we'll make dinner together. Hang out, have fun, and hook up at your place. And if she gives you like, well, I'd really not rather do that. Why don't we meet out somewhere? Why don't we meet and go to dinner? Because I'm not really comfortable with that. What she's trying to do is keep you in friend zone because you are the one who is stupid enough to say, I don't want to push the issue. Let's just be friends for now. Bad way to go. So if that's what she says and that's how she comes back to you, and just say, hey, you know, it's been a long week. I'm just kind of in the mood to hang. If you're not really down with that, give me a call in a few weeks and maybe I'll be more up to doing something more formal in the future. It's like you got to do the takeaway in that particular case. She knows you like her. I mean, obviously she was holding your hand, but the problem is that you hung out for so long, for so much without making a move. She started to think it was strictly a platonic thing and you just, you hesitated. So obviously you were covering up your attraction for a while before you went to kiss her and that made you look weak because you masked your feelings. An alpha male doesn't mask his feelings. He just goes for it. When the opportunity presents itself, boom, it's happening. Just like that. So that's what I do. I wouldn't call her, wouldn't text her, wouldn't do nothing. And if she gets in touch with you, assume she wants to see you, make a date at your house, tell her to bring over a bottle of wine because you shouldn't be willing to go out of your way. I mean, you friend zone yourself by agreeing to that, which was a bad thing to do. Never fucking tell a woman that you're interested in friendship when it's not what you really want. You're, you're acting like a prostitute. You're prostituting your feelings. It's a bad way to go. It's almost impossible to get out of that situation when you put yourself in there. And that's why I say invite her over to your place because it's what you want to do on your terms. If she's coming over to your place, you're making dinner together, bottle of wine, it's pretty fucking obvious that the interest is romantic and not platonic. 
So let's get to the second email. This guy says, hey coach, just over a year ago, I went on two dates with two different girls. For similar but different reasons, I couldn't get a second date with either of them. Knowing that I could do more harm than good by continuing to try, I used the takeaway or negative sale technique. My understanding is that I need to walk away and wait for either one of these women to reach out to me. I played it cool for a month now. What is playing it cool? Guys use that all the time in emails. He says, is there any point where it becomes appropriate for me to reach out to her even though she denied me for a second date? Think about it. If you're a catch, if you're a gift, if you're an awesome man that has lots of possibilities and is the kind of guy that all women want and then you ask a girl out and she's like, eh, eh. I don't think so. I'm not interested in that. And when a woman has that attitude, it's like, you just walk and never look back. Well, hey, give me a call if you change your mind. That's how you handle it and you walk away. In this particular case, you've walked away for, it's been at least a month, I guess you said. It's approval seeking behavior to reach out to him again. I, w I wouldn't do that at all. You offered them the gift of your time and they were like, eh, think about it. You really want to spend your time and your money going out with a girl who's like, eh. You want to? I mean, you want to be with a woman who is not like sitting on the fence. I saw this the other day. I retweeted this on Twitter. Something along the lines of, you don't want to spend your time with someone who's like on the fence about you. You want someone who will jump fences to be with you. Think about it. You deserve that, and you're not gonna have it with this. I mean, whatever you, you fucked up, you made yourself look weak, whatever it was, or maybe they weren't interested. It doesn't matter. Don't waste your fucking time with women like that. They change their mind or they think, you know, that guy was pretty cool and they reach out to you. There could be another dude in the background. I mean, who knows? Let them make the effort. Make them earn you. You're a catch. Think about it. So let's get, he's got a second question here. He says, one of the, these two girls that I had seen a few times about a year ago, I messaged her on Facebook and since we texted in the past, I kept it short to the point and was decisive and made a definite date. Well, good job. I picked her up and I took her to dinner. We went back to my place after dinner since she had plans to go out with her girlfriends later that night. And Once we were alone, things got much more exciting. We sat and talked for a while and I looked for the signs and read her body language, which was inviting. At one point, I could literally feel the sexual energy in the room. I quickly turned things from talking to making out, which got pretty heated. She stayed longer than intended and her friend called to see why she was late. She even invited me to come out with them, which I politely declined. I would have said, you know what? We're having a lot more fun. Tell your girlfriends that you're going to take a rain check and then you and I can continue hanging out. That's what I would have said to her. And she's like, no, I'm really going to go. And it's like, all right. Well, no. And she's like, well, why don't you come along with us? No, no, no. You go hang out with your girlfriends and call me later. Say that to her. To avoid getting cock blocked, but at least you refuse to go hang out and do that because you wanted just you and her. The idea of seduction is to get closer and closer until you end up inside of her ultimately. And if you go had a, taken that invitation and gone and hung out with her friends, guess what? She wouldn't have been all touchy feely because she didn't want to answer all the questions like, "Who is this guy? What's going on with him? What are you thinking? What's going on?" And you just end up getting cock blocked or clam slammed in this particular case. He says after her friend called, we stopped making out every couple of minutes and she'd say I need to go and then she'd start making out with me again. And that's when you go, you know what, you need to call your girlfriend and say you're having a really great time with this really awesome dude and you're sorry, you'll make it up to him but you're, you know, you're going to take a rain check. And you tell her that. That's being alpha. That's, that's being the leader and suggesting that. He says, I kept my laughter to myself since that was a tell that she couldn't resist me. After 10 to 15 minutes, I took the lead and I said, Let's go. It's like you got to dare her to cancel her friend. She has to say, you know what? I really need to be with my girlfriends. Can you take me home? I would have said, sure. He says, I put my shoes on and opened the door. And now I've played it cool for a month since being, being denied a second date. What would you do? Well, she was obviously into you. So I don't, you didn't, you didn't really share what happened here. But the one thing that I will say that you did that I wouldn't have done was that I, you know, cause you gotta have the attitude of I'm way more fun than anything else that you got going on. Think about it. And so if you believe yourself as being way more fun than anything else that she could have going on, you would have no problem just going, tell your girlfriends that you're having a really great time with this awesome dude 
and that you're going to take a rain check because you're having a great, fun, romantic evening with this very charming and handsome guy who's also a really great kisser. And you want to see where it goes. And she's like, okay. And she'll pull out her phone and she'll text him. And then shh, you could have seduced her successfully. But instead, you let her be the leader and you, went, you submitted to what she was doing. Because she was just she was, could have gone either way. She could have hung out with her friends or with you because she wasn't complaining. She was like, yeah, I need to go. But she kept making out with you. So you should have been the leader and suggested that she stay with you in exactly this, the way that I stated a minute ago. So this is number three. I talked more than I should have and I could use some advice in leading the conversation to like 80-20. He says like a list of reasons why – the woman should do 80% of the talking and I should only be doing 20%. Well, because it allows you to remain mysterious. And what most guys do is they talk too much. They talk so much about their accomplishments and their dreams and their goals and what they're going to do. And all they end up doing is talking about themselves. And what happens is it becomes approval-seeking behavior. In essence, he's trying to say, hey, here's all the list of all the reasons – why you should be hanging out with me and you should be dating me and you should want to become my girlfriend. And then by the end of the day, because what creates rapport with another human being is them talking about themselves. People, we all love to talk about ourselves. And so it has two reasons, two major reasons that I talk about in my book. The first one is it allows you to remain mysterious. And the second is if she really has sincere interest in you, guess what? She's going to want to know all kinds of things about you and therefore she's going to ask you. Therefore, she has to work to get to know you. This enables you to remain mysterious and women love guys that are mysterious and hard to figure out. But if you're talking 80% of the time and telling her your whole life story and everything that you got going on, Number one, she's going to think you're selfish. Number two, she's going to know everything about you. And then you're, by the end of the first date, she's going to know everything about you. And then guess what? You're no longer really that mysterious. But if she has to work to pull it out of you, you remain mysterious that way. That's why you do that. And it creates rapport because if she's talking about herself the whole time and you're listening, guess what? You're not just thinking about getting in her pants. You're interested in who she is as a human being, as a woman, as a person. And that in and of itself creates Attraction. He says, this will continually reinforce my reasoning for personal growth. I have to be in a playful mood to banner. Changing my mood can be challenging and if I strike up a playful conversation, I'm immediately in a better mood. It's as simple as saying something dumb that puts a smile on another person's face. So sometimes I have to fake it. Can you give me some general ways to do this? Well, if you were leading the conversation and asking questions and being fascinated by your date and not talking so much, which is what you admitted that you're doing, you wouldn't be – see, that's the problem. You talk too much and then you run out of things to say and then you start trying to force humor. You start trying to force the conversation. You start trying to – and then at that point, the woman's thinking, this guy's so fucking selfish and into himself. That's all he cares about because all he does is talk about himself and it's weak approval-seeking behavior. So it's always better to ask questions. Anybody that's watching this that's in sales knows that. It's better to ask questions because by the law of reciprocity, it's a term from sales that when somebody listens to you the majority of the time, especially like when I used to be in the real estate business, I would sit down and I'd do a buyer's consultation with people. I'd let, sit there and let them talk. I'd ask them about their kids, where they grew up, what they like to do for fun, their hobbies, their interests, if there was a married couple, how they met. And they would tell me the story and their, lo their love story about how they met. They would talk about their kids. People love to talk about themselves. And guess what? If you're an old friend and you're just catching up, you ran them in the grocery store or at a party, what are you going to do? How you been? What's up? How's the kids? How's the wife? How's the job? How's the career? How's your business going? How's the house? Did you, add that, did you ever end up putting that pool in that you were talking about? Or how'd the pool turn out? Or, you know, I heard you guys were renovating the house. How'd it turn out? Oh, we love the kitchen. You should come by and check it out sometime. That's how people talk. And so if you ask questions from that perspective, you're not – you're no longer a person to be on guard a bit. Oh, this person's trying to – like a woman goes on a date. This guy's trying to get my pants. But you sit there and you ask questions. You're like an old friend. You're like somebody that she already knows and she's telling you her whole life story. It creates rapport. It makes her feel like I can trust this guy. He really cares about me and who I am and not just my physical looks.
even though back in your mind as a man, you're always thinking about her body and her looks and what you want to do to her. Us guys are just that way. So let's get to the third email. This guy says, hey coach, the girl I was talking to is from Brazil. We spent six months with a strong attraction towards one another. She really dug my goofy laid back personality and it was mostly a texting relationship. When we met, we had a passionate four days. She left and then came back to the States to visit me a few months later. We fucked like rabbits. Awesome. Good for you. Hang on, have fun, hook up. Then I went to Brazil to see her and this shit hit the fan. I had had this recent case of erectile dysfunction for some reason. The general didn't stand at attention. I did an article and a video a while back called How Men Can Have Multiple Orgasms. It really helps you get in touch with your body. And really a big part of erectile dysfunction is, is what's going on internally with your belief system and just being comfortable with letting go. Because just like having an orgasm or getting an erection, it's all about being able to let go and let the sensations happen to you. But if you're under the pre- you put yourself under pressure to perform, then you can psych yourself right out and then you can't even get hard because you're thinking about it too much. He says, last time I saw her, I took care of it with medication, but the first night in Brazil, I couldn't do anything because I had none. I didn't know what to say to her because it was embarrassing, and since she didn't come on to me much afterward to avoid an awkward situation because I didn't explain my circumstance. When when that happens and you don't talk about it, women women naturally, instinctively, when the guy gets hard, wow, he's sexually attracted to me. He wants me. He desires me. When you can't get it up, she thinks, oh, he doesn't find me pretty and attractive. And they take that as rejection. So it would have been helpful to talk about it. But also to just lay there and massage each other. I, like I said, I, I talk about that extensively in that video. So if you Google Corey Wayne, how men can have multiple orgasms, that will really help you. And also, I've done a few videos why men become impotent sometimes. So if you go Corey Wayne, why men become impotent, I, I go through extensive detail on those on, on the psychological, just what's going on in your mind, your belief system. He says, she became distant and I wrote her a letter saying that I care about her to reassure her that I would take care of her because I thought she was insecure about a future with me living in the States. And he said, puts idiot in parentheses here. He's like, yeah. He says, by the end of this trip, she said she just wanted to be friends. Ouch. You came on way too strong and way too heavy with that kind of a – because you're trying to make up for something that you feel like you lack inside. He says, sec, four, we had sex four times in 12 days. It was horrendous. He says, I said that I wouldn't be friends and she said she was afraid to lose me and needed time to figure things out. When a woman says, I need time to figure things out, that always means you basically came on too strong. You made her fear losing her freedom and you made her feel like she was in a relationship. But again, this is only the second time you've hung out, dude. He's a week later. She let me know that she wanted to see me again. But since we live so far apart, it was hard to her to commit to long distance. That tells me you're focusing on a commitment and locking her down because you fear losing her. That's why she needed time and she needed to figure things out in the first place. That's where you're fucking up. He said, we made plans to go to New York. We talked for four days and she stopped talking to me. She went on vacation without telling me and I freaked out and did a flippy floppy bluffing number for a couple of days. Huh? Huh? To force responses from her and I fuck it up so bad that she said she still likes me and admires me but only wants to be friends. Yeah, this is total needy approval-seeking behavior. I told her I'd give her time and didn't do what I said, not her fault. So in other words, you told her you'd give her time, but then you proceeded to blow her phone up. That makes you look totally weak, and you end up ruining it when you do that. I said if she needed time, she wouldn't hear from me, and she said, okay. A month goes by, she sends me, uh, hey, Merry Christmas to you and your family. I send back a simple text using her pet name. Two weeks go by and I think it's cool to send her a playful text. No reply. Two weeks later, I stupidly send a text saying that I care about her and we can be friends. Come on, man. I understand why she wanted to be friends and that my life was always better with her in it. 
If she wanted to be playful again, let me know. And he puts in parentheses, dumb ass. <laughs> He's like, you already know the answer. No reply. Duh. I like, so it's like you're being totally inauthentic. She knows you like her and you want her, but yet you're giving her this BS about being friends. He says, I want her to be into me again. Her birthday is next week. Do I ignore it? Do I send something simple? Dude, she blew you off. She didn't respond to you. Why, why do you think continuing to send her text when she's already ignored two to three of your messages is going to mean anything? It's not. What's my best course of action? Absolutely nothing. Doing nothing. Walking and never looking back. He says, I know I fucked up, but she'll be back around sooner or later to visit her sister. Well, great. If she really wants to see you or she reconsiders, guess what? She'll get in touch, dude. It's as simple as that. But I think you pretty much screwed the pooch in this one, bro. So if I were you, I would move on. So let's get into the fourth guy's email. He says, hey, coach. I emailed you back in the fall regarding my dream girl that friend zoned me after she pursued me throughout the summer and we got completely naked and fooled around in bed, all initiated by her, but I was turned away when intercourse was about to happen. I later learned that she had done the exact same thing to another guy I know. Well, that tells me that you didn't get her turned on enough. You should have been using the cunnilingus. You gotta learn how to give a woman oral sex and get her really turned on or using your hands or your fingers to the point where she just grabs you and pulls you on top of her or jumps on top of you. He says, this girl was fresh out of a long distance, long term relationship when we fooled around and was continuing to display high levels of attraction afterwards. I figured she wasn't emotionally ready to have sex with me yet. This is why experience really helps in this area. Learning to be with a woman, being comfortable with your body, being comfortable with a woman's body, being comfortable with practicing infinite patience, being able to tell when she's really turned on and when she's not turned on, and knowing how to turn her on in bed. It's like a slow escalation. He says, I was in, the way you get there is through practicing. And that's, that's why I say, hang out, have fun, hook up. Practice with as many women as you can. Because you will get better over time, especially like when you're in long-term relationships and you spend a lot of time and you have sex, especially like when you're in a relationship for many years with a woman. I mean, you're going to have sex a lot, literally hundreds and hundreds of times. And then it gets to the point where it's pretty easy. But if you've only been with a few women, you only had sex a couple of times and never really had a relationship, you're going to be lacking that experience. And it just takes, like anything, time and repetition. That's why I say, one of the things I learned from Tony Robbins, and it applies to everything in life. Repetition is the mother of skill. If you want to become a good lover, have sex with a woman who knows how to be a good lover and ask her to teach you and explore. It's just take your time with it. He says, I was eventually friend zoned after a few attempts at hooking up with her a short time thereafter and she told me that I had been too aggressive and invaded her personal space which had pushed her away. Exactly. That's the real reason why you didn't get laid, dude. You came on too strong and you rushed it and she wasn't ready for sex yet. You were completely naked and you should have just taken your time and let it happen. Instead, you were like in a rush to beat up her pelvis and she stopped you. It's the art of two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back. Using your fingers and using your hands Remember, all of, mo all of the women's nerve endings are on the outside of her body. They're on her clit. So get very familiar with the little man in the boat and be gentle. Don't ever fucking bite the little man in the boat. I had, I had a woman I dated many years ago. She, she had a guy who went down her and he went, and he bit her and she fucking like hit the ceiling. I was like, are you fucking serious? Like what a fucking moron. I mean, he bit her really hard down her to the point where it's like she didn't have sex with him after that. And she was very, like even when I went down on her the first time, she was real nervous about that. I was like, baby, don't worry. I know what I'm doing. He says, I came across your material and when you're, when you're going down, ask her to tell you, say, tell me what you like. Tell me how hard or how soft, how slow, how fast. And you boot your fingers inside of her. Let her guide you. You know, when she grabs your, your, the back of your head with her in your hair and moves you around, moves your head around on her. That way, that's how you'll learn instead of just assuming. Because if you're just assuming you're, and you're probably not, and you go down on her and she stops you after a minute or two. You're not doing it right. He says, I came across your material and sent you an email about a month after I had implanted myself even deeper into friend zone. 
And he says, I made even more attempts to hook up after she friend zoned me. And after reading your book and watching your videos, I have improved a great deal at approaching women and getting dates. I've hooked up with a few attractive girls since being friend zoned by the girl in question. I also stopped initiating contact with her altogether, although I didn't have the I'm not interested in just being friends conversation, which you advise, because I thought it would push her further away since we started out as friends when we were both in relationships last year. So your friends, you're going along with a fraudulent friendship. <clears throat> Bad way to go, dude. See, an alpha male is not going to stick around for that. It's like you're sticking around going, gee, I'm going to be nice to her and put her on a pedestal and hopefully she'll change her mind. And this has gone on for like six, eight months now, dude. How, how's the blue balls working? How's that feeling? Probably not too good. He says, we ran into each other on campus a couple times after not having spoken for a while and her body language was indicative of attraction or at least flirtatiousness and she was standing close to me and fidgeting with her necklace during our entire conversation. I know it made an impression on her because she sent me texts in the days after our encounter and even went so far as to like and then quickly unlike a photo of mine on Facebook while I was online when I didn't immediately respond. I did my best to maintain my... Well, when she texts you, you should assume she wanted to see you and made a date. Hey, great to hear from you. I'd love to see you. When are you free to get together? Well, I'm free Tuesday. Great. How about Tuesday, 8 o'clock, grab a bottle of wine and come on over to my place. We'll make dinner together. I did my best to... Because after all, you guys have already been naked in bed together but just didn't have sex. And if she doesn't want to do that, then just say, Hey, well, give me a call if you change your mind because I'd love to see you. You know, she tries to get you to meet her out or do something like that. Just say, hey, it's been a long week. I'm just in the mood to hang. And she'll either agree to do what you want or she'll back off. And if she backs off or bails, then that's okay. Maybe, she, you know, she already reached out to you. She'll reach out to you again. You never continue to chase after a woman when you've been rejected or friend zoned. Ever. Not once. Under any circumstances. When a woman turns you down for a date or she rejects you, you just walk away and say, hey, give me a call if you change your mind. And you walk and you never look back. He says, I did my best to maintain my masculine core and didn't initiate any contact with her. It got to the point where she was even making up excuses to get in contact with me, i.e. asking me for someone's phone number, which I knew she already had. She recently went home for Christmas break and messaged me every other day, even texting twice when I was slow to respond. Although I know she had an attachment to her ex, I had the feelings that things weren't going well between them. And I started to feel like her attraction to me was building up again. And they're not speaking for a couple of weeks, she threw a birthday party at her condo for her best friend to which I was invited. When I arrived, I noticed she was hovering around me at times asking me how I was and what I had been up to. She was also laughing at all of my jokes and made prolonged eye contact with me. I think you need to get over with and kiss me right now. I think your lips miss mine. You need to take advantage of those opportunities, not sit there and mask your feelings and your desire for her, acting like you don't care. He says, her body language changed quite drastically when we got to the club, however. She started holding hands, flirting quite heavily with a guy, and even brought him over to make introductions. Well, obviously, she's been she's dating some other dude because she'd reached out to you numerous times and you never made dates with her. You just like ran around in circles like a dog chasing its tail. So eventually a woman starts to think, well, he's not interested or you don't have the confidence. He says, I played it cool, whatever that means, and struck up a conversation with the guy in order to appear emotionally detached from the situation. All this, although this was tough to stomach, especially since I later learned that this was not their first encounter, I went about my night. And this is, again, this girl was texting you and reaching out to you and you weren't making dates. So we were waiting for her to be the man. It's the man's job to be direct and decisive. Women aren't, that's what they'll do. They'll reach out to you and put themselves in your orbit. It's up to you as the man to make a date, to be direct, to be decisive. He says, I went, up, I went about my night and even ended up hooking up with a girl I'd been flirting with for months. Hey, good for you, dude. Probably because all of your attention was focused on this other woman. You were indifferent and had to take it or leave it kind of attitude. And that's why you hooked up with this other girl. That should tell you something about how you need to handle things. He says, what I didn't understand is why she acted in such a hostile manner after having introduced me to her new fling. She was short with me when we ran into each other later that night and left the club without saying a word to me. 
All of her attention seemed to be focused on him. Well, obviously, maybe she saw you hooking up with this other girl and she was pissed. He says, Coach, I'm still very much in love with this girl. Let it go, dude. We have such a seamless connection. Yeah, it really sounds like a seamless connection the last time you hung out. That I am having a very tough time letting her go. Although I'm making efforts to get over her, i.e. going on dates, focusing on school, etc., I just can't seem to shake her from my conscious and I constantly compare her, her to the girls I meet. Why would she display all these signs of attraction and completely blow me off? Because you never made a move. Is her constant te texting simply attention seeking? Well, you should make dates. I say it in my book. If you knew my book and you'd read it 10 or 15 times, you would know that when a woman reaches out to you, it means that she's interested and she wants to see you, but they're not going to ask you out on dates. They, that's your job. Ask them out. Hey, great to hear from you. I'd love to see you. When are you free to get together? How many times have I said that in videos? He says, would you say this latest encounter is an indication that she's lost all interest in me? Sounds like you might have screwed the pooch, dude. You waited too long. If this pattern continues to repeat itself, it would be better for me to sever ties completely. When I try to distance myself, she doesn't let me. Her behavior gives me hope, but then she pulls the rug out from under me. What's my next move? Wait to hear from her. When she does, make a fucking date, dude. It's really simple. So let's get into the fifth and final email. This guy says, hey coach, I'm 27 I've never had a relationship before. I've only attempted once. I'm shy and there's this girl I really like. She's 27 also. She's a first year physician and I'm in my last year of medical school. We will only be in the same city for four more months and afterwards the closest I will be able to work is an hour away from her. We started hanging out around October and we would go out for breakfast, dinner, and drinks all the time go for walks, and sometimes I went over to her place to cook for her, and we would drink wine. She also had come to my place and cooked for me. We had a great couple of months, and one day she said, you should convert because she's a Muslim, and while I don't have a religion, I said, haha, maybe jokingly. I thought this was a sign in her religion that a guy has to be Muslim for her to marry them. I was like, whoa, dude. How about going out and having some dates instead of hanging out like the gay male girlfriend? After two months of this, one night I said, I've come to think of you as more than a friend. Do you feel the same way? And she said, no, I don't. And I said, why? And she said, well, it's too soon. The reason she only thinks of you as a friend is because that's the way you've always interacted with her. That's why I say, hang out, have fun, hook up. Not hang out, have fun, act like her therapist or her gay male girlfriend, which is what you've been doing. And that's why you're stuck in friend zone. You should make dates. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. Make a move on her. Go for a kiss. And she says, oh, I can't. I'm Muslim or I'm Christian or I'm ultra-religious or whatever. And I say, hey, well, I'm not down with that. You're not religious and obviously you ain't thinking that way. He says, at the time, I didn't know what that meant, but I didn't ask. It means you already friend zone yourself, dude. A couple of weeks after, one of my close guy friends, who was also a close friend of hers, had a conversation and my friend asked her, do you see yourself with Bob? And she told him, yes, maybe, but not right now. I'm still trying to get over my ex. That makes you look so pathetically weak when you have a friend of yours get in touch with her and ask her something like that. It's just a bad way to go. And this is typical beta male behavior. This is the kind of shit I used to do in my early 20s. And it never leads to success. It always leads to you being stuck in friend zone forever. He says, it turns out she had broken up with her ex before we started to hang out and her ex happens to be a 52-year-old surgeon at the hospital where I'm a student and she's a doctor at. So obviously if she had an ex that she was dating and this dude's 52 years old and he broke up with her, she's used to hanging out, having fun and hooking up. And this, again, you didn't act like a man with her who was sexually interested and attracted to her. You covered up your feelings and instead acted like you were only interested in something platonic. He says this surgeon had cheated on her twice and she went back twice. We still hang out but not as much as we used to. I make flirty comments like I wonder how many kids we're going to have anyways and then say sorry haha. -ha. That's weak. She says no wow that's bold I like that. Great why don't you come over here and kiss me then. And she throws some crap in your face about religion you go come on. Give me a break your ex-boyfriend cheated on you twice. Like, give me a break. I know you're experienced. Bring those beautiful lips over here and kiss me now. But after a while, she doesn't get surprised when I become cocky like that anymore. Well, you're, you, know, you think you're being cocky, but you're still not making a move. It's like you're waiting for her to be the man. That's why you're not getting anywhere. 
He says, she told me her New Year's resolution is to not go back to her ex. A couple of weeks ago, she went to my guy friend again in tears because she missed him and can't stop thinking about him. I know I made mistakes by basically asking her to be my girlfriend early on. And every time I stopped texting her, she asked me if I want to do something and we go hang out. Just invite her over to your place, dude. He says, it's like she doesn't want me to go anywhere but doesn't want a relationship. Stop focusing on a relationship. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. Be a fucking man, dude. You got to read my book. That's why you're not getting anywhere. It's like you don't meet a girl and go, hey, you want to be my girlfriend? Hang out, have fun, and hook up. And after about two months of hanging out and having fun and hooking up on numerous occasions, guess what? She'll emotionally be at that place if you follow what I teach in my book and she'll ask you, where do you see this going? She'll bring up the boyfriend-girlfriend talk. But you will n- I promise you, will, you will fail 100% of the time if you keep asking girls to be your girlfriend on a first date or a couple of dates in. You'll never get there. I tried that approach numerous times and it didn't work. He says, what should I do? Should I ask her about her ex more and try to help her through it? Hey, Corey, should I try to be her therapist even more? Come on, man. Should I give her an ultimatum? Come on, man. Should I say, so when do we start dating? Come on, man. This is what you do. When she reaches out to you, be like, hey, great to hear from you. I'd love to see you when you're free to get together. And tell her to grab a bottle of wine and come all over to your place and make dinner together. And at some point when you're being touchy and she's, you know, touchy flirty, touchy feely, she's standing extra close, say, I think you need to get over with and kiss me right now. She goes, well, I'm not over my ex. I say, exactly. That's exactly why you need to kiss me because it will help you get over him. And bring those beautiful lips over here and kiss me. And go for it. Hang out and have fun and hook up. And then if she still won't do it, you're going to say, look, I'm not interested in just being friends with you. If that's all you want from this, then I'm going to have to pass and we should probably call it a night and you should go. Give me a call if you ever change your mind. And then you walk and you never look back. That's how you handle that situation, dude. You've got to be direct and go for what you want. You need to read my book too because it's obvious that you have not read it. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email session with me. You can choose any of those options by going to my website clicking the products tab at the top of your screen and just follow the instructions for whatever option is best for you. If you don't have the Kindle version of my ebook or you'd like to get a paperback version, on my website underneath the email sign up box is a link that'll take you right to the Amazon Kindle download page and if you want the Kindle, just select Kindle or you can select the paperback version, whichever option is best for you. And I will talk to you soon.